Mastering Mortgages, Empowering Women in Home Ownership. Hello, welcome to Women's Financial Empowerment Group. I'm your host, Ruth Agbeloso. Thank you so much for visiting my channel. If you're new here, thank you for stopping by. Please go ahead and like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. And if you've been here before, please go ahead and like, share, do all those wonderful things, and hit the notification bell. That way you'll know whenever I upload a new video. On this channel, I discuss all things money, money mindset, making money, saving money, investing money, and more. So please come back again because I don't want you to miss anything. And if you want to know more about me and what I do, stay with me to the end of the video and I'll share that information with you. Now on today's video, we're going to talk about mastering mortgages empowering women in home ownership. We have a special guest today, Elizabeth James from Cross Country Mortgage. She helps women obtain mortgages. So let's welcome Elizabeth Jane. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi. Welcome, it's so good to have you on. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I am so excited to be here with you. Awesome. So I told our viewers just your name and the name of your company. So I'm going to leave it to you to tell them a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Well, I have been in the housing industry in some capacity since um, the early to mid 90s. Um, I started off in new home construction sales, did that for several years, and then I went to work for a lender uh, who did a lot of my pre-approvals uh, at that time, but I worked in every capacity except for uh, as a loan officer. So I got a really good uh, understanding about programs and guidelines and paperwork and uh, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff and then uh, became a, a loan originator licensed since 2009 and have been doing it ever since. Oh, that is awesome. That's a that's a good long time. So you know all about this topic. So I feel like you were the best person to come on and talk to us about this. So let's get into some questions. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. Awesome. So you've told us about what you do and everything like that. And I'm just wondering with your background, um, how have you been helping women um, who want to become first time home buyers on their journey? Like, how do you help them? Sure. So um, kind of going back to my personal story, when I was working in an operations kind of a capacity with, with that lender, uh, I was also a single mom. And uh, I decided it was time for me to buy a home. I felt like I was in a good financial position. But I will tell you, even working in the industry, uh, it, I didn't get a whole lot of guidance. And there were some things that I needed to do. And, and people didn't really walk me through all of that stuff or explain it to me. Having gone through that experience myself personally uh, has made me, uh, I almost want to say hyper aware of the deficiencies um, in the process and how uh, women coming out of relationships or you know, coming out of maybe financial difficulties or maybe even not even that, but just in general, they don't, they're not quite sure how to navigate those waters. And I feel like the, my personal own personal experience uh, that I had has helped equip me to be able to do that. Because sometimes it, it can be a, maybe just difficult, uh, you know, because there's a, a lot of things that you have to talk about that maybe you're not pleasant. <laughs> And that becomes part of the conversation, but it's really important to, for me to have empowered these women to know that they can do it on their own. And they do have advocates that, that will help them um, to, to be in a position to be able to do that and provide for their families, or, you know, even if it's just themselves, that they can do this on their own. That sounds great. And I think that's a great segue to lead us to the next question that I have for you is, um, what are some common challenges or concerns that women have when it comes to obtaining their first home? Uh, well, sometimes they're concerned about down payment or, you know, how, how am I going to save up enough money to buy a home? What does that paperwork look like? How much stuff are you going to need from me? Because uh, a lot of times we're going to need, if there's been a divorce and there's child support, we kind of have to open up those wounds again and, and kind of get all that, that paperwork. And, and it's not going to be fun or pleasant, but uh, I, I think sometimes they have some reservations about sharing 
that kind of stuff mm -hmm. with a complete stranger, obviously. I think that's maybe some of the hesitation or some of the, what holds a lot of them back is, um, you know, who do they trust and who do they trust with that very personal information? And um, so it, it, it takes a real soft touch to to make sure that they know that they can trust me. I don't really want to know all of that personal information, but it, it's kind of, I need to know it to help put them on the right path. I love that. As a financial coach for women, um, I, I find that a lot, that women are very hesitant to disclose certain things about their finances, particularly when there have been some mistakes financially and you know, they kind of feel guilt or embarrassment when it comes to, you know, just disclosing those things. So I think it's great that you have that soft touch because, you know, women in particular just really, I, at least from my experience, I've seen that they just really need someone that gives them that ease, you know, that they can feel free to share and they're not going to be judged or belittled or anything like that. So that's really off. That's really awesome. Um, so how do you tailor your services to meet the unique needs of women seeking their first mortgage? Probably contrary to popular belief, mortgages are not all black and white. So it's it's not always all either either approve or deny. There's a whole lot of gray area in there. And because different individuals have been on a different journey and they've experienced a lot of different things along the way that brings them to where they are, sometimes what's good for this person is maybe not going to work for this person. But here we've got, you know, I, I kind of know, I don't want to say loopholes, but uh, I know the guidelines inside and out. And I know how to how to find what is going to be the best path, I guess, to, to take someone down if they're looking to, to purchase a home. And, and it's not going to look the same for everyone. That definitely makes sense. I feel like when it comes to anything in the financial industry, it's not one size fits all. And I think people run into an issue when they think that way and they, um, they hesitate to seek help because they feel like, okay, I can just get all the information online myself. I can watch some YouTube videos or listen to a podcast. But like you said, it's not one size fits all. So what if they have unique situations and, you know, they, don't, they just don't have that information. So it's, I think it's important for people to really seek help and get the guidance that they need. So I think, I think it's great that they have you and they're in a position to get that advice that they really need. Um, so what advice do you have for women who may be hesitant or unsure about the home buying process? As long as I can at least get on a phone conversation with them, I'm not shy. I don't have anything to hide. And I've been through all of that stuff myself. You know, I've been divorced. I've been a single mom. I've had financial issues where I actually went through a bankruptcy and I lost a home. And you know, I had a lot of these things happen to myself personally, and I'm not afraid to share that with people. And I, I feel like it puts them at ease to know, like, hey, there's no judgment coming from me because I've, I've been where you are. I know how I can help put you into a better position. So, you know, I'm going to be your friend through this through this process because I understand where you are. So I, I think that's that's key is just at least convincing them to at least talk to me. Uh, and that, that's a battle. <laughs> uh, so, you know, trusted referral partners, you know, are, are fantastic to, to get the word out there and say, hey, you know, Elizabeth is great and, and she's helped other clients in this way. And, you know, don't be afraid. You don't know where you stand until you, until you know. So it's best just to have a conversation. It doesn't even mean that I'm, I'm pulling credit or I'm looking at all your stuff. I just want to have a conversation first. Thank you. Yes, that that's great. Um, you mentioned, you know, I'm your friend. So I'm just wondering, how do you handle a situation where you meet with a woman and she's telling you her, you know, whether it's her financials or what, whatever it is, and you're like, lady, you don't qualify or, or, you know, like you feel like she's not in the right place to buy a home. Like, how do you handle a situation like that? Right. So I'm this, this goes really for anyone. And I hate to tell people, no, you know, that's just not in my nature. I don't, I don't like <laughs> doing it. If I'm going to, if I can find a way to make it work, I'm going to do that. But if it's just not going to be feasible 
at this time, my job then is to say, well, it's just, you know, maybe it's a no for now, but here are the steps that you need to take so that I can get you to a yes, uh, whether it's repair, whether it's, you know, saving up some money, whether it's paying off a couple of things, whether it's, you know, maybe waiting for the child support to season out to where we're able to use it as income. They need a co-signer, you know, maybe mom or dad or grandma or somebody can help. You know, we're going to walk through all those scenarios just so they know that it is possible, um, but we might have to, you know, kind of line some other things up um, to, to get them there. And whether that's a six month uh, timeline or a year or, or two years, I'm in it for the long haul. If, if, they're, if they're willing to put in the work, um, I'm willing to, to get them there. So the hard conversations are hard to have, you know, when people don't qualify for something that they really want, or if now is not a good time, but I love the way you handle it because honestly, it can really feel like a defeat for anyone who's trying to go for a home, especially a woman, especially a woman who has gone through some things, you know, whether it's divorce or whatever situation. Um, and then to be told a flat out no, that is really defeating. So the fact that you give her some steps of things that she needs to do to prepare, I think that's awesome. And that really shows your heart and that you really care for the women that you serve. And, and that's why I chose you to be on this because I, I felt that you had that heart. And I, I love that because I believe that anything that we're doing as far as serving, we should do it with our heart and it's not just um, our heads. And we have this knowledge and so we just shoot someone down. So thank you so much for what you do because I that really resonated with me because I remember being in that situation where I wanted to get a home. I felt like I had enough money. I felt like it was time, but there were some things that just didn't line up and I was grateful to have someone that, you know, just kindly said to me, you know, if you can do X, Y, Z, then we can try this again in X, Y months, right? And that was really helpful to me. It was empowering because I didn't feel like, oh, I failed, you know, I'm never going to get a house, but it was like, okay, let me work on these things. So I really appreciate that. How do you guide women through the mortgage application process, like from pre-approval to closing? Hopefully in that initial conversation that I've had with them uh, through, you know, whatever questions that I'm asking them, because I've done this for so long, I, I, I kind of know what I need to ask to be able to understand what paperwork that I'm going to have to to get from them. So usually that's next steps is, you know, compile a list of things that they'll need to put together for me. And, and basically I just have them fill out the application on their own. And then once we review their, their paperwork, uh, then we kind of discuss next steps as far as what programs they do qualify for, what that looks like as far as a payment amount or, you know, what kind of money are they going to need out of pocket? Because hopefully I've already asked them, you know, hey, do you have some money set aside? Do you need some help with down payment? Uh, just so I'm looking at it with an eye to, you know, thinking about the different programs and the different paperwork that is required for each of those uh, to hopefully get it all in one shot. I know that it's frustrating for me if I have to keep going back and getting stuff and getting stuff and getting stuff. So, you know, I try to be pretty thorough up front just so that we're not going to uncover surprises later down the road. That definitely makes sense. Are there any specific mortgage programs or options available for first time women home buyers that they should to be aware of? Yeah, so I work a lot with uh, an organization called Indiana Housing Community Development, and they do offer some down payment assistance. They have a couple of options, whether they're a first time home buyer or not. The, the yeah. best program that offers the most amount of assistance with the best interest rate is for first time home buyers. It does have income limits, but they're pretty generous, especially if they're a household of three or more. They do have credit score requirements and those are set forth by the, the program itself. So that tends to be where we kind of do the most amount of work is, is making sure that we're kind of maximizing their purchase power uh, by if we need to bump their, their credit score up a little bit to be able to purchase a little more. Um, it, the only weird thing about that program is it's the same interest rate for everyone. So 
Um, they set forth that interest rate and it doesn't matter whether you have a 640 score or an 800 score, they offer the same rate to everyone. So, um, so it's great for those that, you know, maybe are on that lower end. Um, so, you know, it's helpful uh, in, in that way. There's, you know, a little bit of grace there on the on the interest rate. So that's the program that I use the most for that. And it does, it provides the required down payment as well as a little bit to go towards closing costs. And, um, you know, we talk about whether they have a family member that can help them with some funds because uh, gift funds are always acceptable as long as we can document where they came from. Um, okay. They always have a co-signer, like a, a parent or, you know, a grandparent, a sister, you know, somebody that's in a good position to be able to help them. Uh, if we need to go that route, um, that's always an option. Um, you can always ask for seller paid closing costs. Uh, although in this market right now, that's not going to be super competitive when uh, there are people making offers that may not need those concessions, but uh, it, it's always something that can be negotiated. But so, yeah, I mean, that, that's probably the best uh, option out there. That's going to be something that I can offer in the entire state of Indiana. There are other programs like a USDA loan that are for more rural areas that uh, doesn't require a down payment. So, you know, some different options there, but I would say most often I'm using that down payment assistance. Okay, awesome. So for someone like me who has owned a home previously years ago with my spouse and now I'm divorced, would I qualify for a first time home buyer program? Because I, I, so many women fall into that category. If you owned a home previously, so what defines a first time home buyer? I guess I'll just say that in our realm, if you have not owned a home in the last three years, you're considered a first time home buyer. So if you've been out on your own for a little while, you know, maybe the, the marital residence is, is, you know, long gone and uh, you've been renting for a while, um, then, you know, you're still considered a first time buyer. Unfortunately, if, uh, you know, if they've departed the residence and even if the home sold, uh, you know, we collect tax returns and that's how we determine whether they're a first time buyer or not. A, a lot of times, Maybe the, the spouse wasn't on the title or the deed to the home, mm -hmm. even if they lived there, maybe they were not obligated on that mortgage. Maybe the husband was on the mortgage, but they didn't have them added to title or to the deed. Um, even though they lived in a home that was owned by their spouse, they're still considered a first time buyer because they were not obligated on that property. So mm -hmm. that's something else that could come up in, in case they were in that situation. So that's good to know, because I think, again, those gray areas, right? So, you know, it's not cut and dry because time frame, paperwork, what paperwork was filed and all of that stuff. So, yeah, I think it's <laughs> it's good that you mentioned that because I'm I'm pretty sure there are lots of people who fall into that category and not really sure where they stand. Um, I even know of women who kind of feel like, they don't qualify and they may, they may qualify. I mean, right. so for those people who are not sure, what's the easiest way for them to find out if they qualify for a first time home buyer program? Uh, I mean, just a conversation with me, we can kind of uncover some of those things. Um, you know, I can also provide links to directly, there are some consumer facing websites that, you know, if they're the kind of person like me that likes to do some research on their own, um, you know, that's somewhere where they can have the information right in front of them to read through and, and, and see those requirements. Um, but obviously, you know, a, a conversation with a real human being will go a long way just to, to, to know the right information that's going to apply to that person. Cause just reading something may, you, it may not be clear to you whether or not that applies to you or not. So, um, you know, having somebody that's familiar with the program is, is definitely helpful. So. Yeah, I, I really think that makes sense for them to speak to someone. Again, you know, a lot of women that I run run into kind of rely on, you know, what they read on in in different media outlets or YouTube. And, you know, they're really hesitant to reach out to someone, but I always encourage them to do that, even, even especially if they're in my program and I'm all about building wealth and leaving a legacy. And as I connect them with people like you and other financial professionals, you know, I think it's just so empowering because 
they don't they learn that they don't have to be afraid to reach out for help and and really get to understand their situation for what it is and see how they can move forward so i think i i do agree that it's important to have that human touch i mean obviously you can google everything these days but it's really nice to be able to have a conversation so um what are some essential factors that women should consider when determining their budget and the affordability for an, a loan i mean yeah for a mortgage loan I've run into this a lot where, you know, maybe they were a stay-at-home mom for, for a while and just have returned to the workforce. So that's something we had to consider is the, the time back to work since they, they were a stay-at-home mom. If they had work history prior to that, sometimes I've had to go back 20 years to get a work history for someone before, and that was really difficult. Luckily, the company that they worked for was uh, still in business, and we were able to, I couldn't believe it, but we, we got what we needed. Um, wow. And then how, how their pay is structured, you know, we're going to look at whether they're a salary or hourly employee. Uh, student loans come into play a lot. Really? It's kind of something that we have to work through uh, as far as that goes. Um, you know, almost everybody's going to have a car loan or credit cards. And um, so we had to we had to look at all of that to see, you know, what price range are they going to be in? Is it going to be able to afford them a house that will accommodate everyone that needs to live there? And, um, you know, <laughs> be a, a payment that's going to fit into that budget once once we consider all the things and. Uh, I'm not one to completely max somebody out. That is just, you know, okay. the first questions I ask is, you know, are you renting somewhere now? How much is that payment? And is that comfortable for you? And is that where you want to stay, you know, or do you have, do you have something maybe budgeted more? And, and I do get a lot of um, almost like deer in the headlights. If you could see that through the phone. <laughs> And when I ask them, have you budgeted something for your monthly payment on your new home? I, I would say about 99% of people haven't even thought about that. And, and maybe it's just because I, I, I work in the field that, you know, that's really important to me is, is budgeting and making sure that I can afford everything that I'm trying to pay for. But, um, you know, that's part of our initial conversation is where do they want that payment to be? And, you know, that's way less of a house than what they really can afford on paper. But I'm not going to say, well, you know, you qualify to buy a $300,000 home where they want to be with their payment is more like a $200,000 home. Right. I'm not going <laughs> to, to max that out because I don't think that's smart. That definitely is reasonable. I mean, when I sit down with my clients and look at their numbers, it's not just numbers. Like we, we definitely talk about where they want to be, what would they like to have in their home, things like that to to get them prepared to come to you <laughs> or someone like you. Um, but we definitely need to think about all the pieces. It's not just the money aspect, but also what type of lifestyle they want to live. And can they sustain that? Because it's so heartbreaking when you do get what you want, but then you can't keep it. So right. it's essential to do the groundwork um, with the budget and ask all those questions that you ask and even more to make sure that, hey, you know, this is going to be a good fit, you know, what it is that I'm trying to get. Because obviously I want to get a five bedroom, three bath, but if I'm not going to be in a position where I'm going to be able to eat the steak meal once a week that I enjoy and that's what my lifestyle has been. <laughs> then I have to really think, you know, what kind of life am I going to have with a five bedroom, two bath house, you right. know? So all of those questions definitely are essential. And I feel like for financial professionals, a lot of times those questions are, people don't really delve into those nitty gritty questions. It's all about the numbers, but at the end of the day, there are more things that go into it than just, you know, how much do you make? <laughs> you know, what are your loans, other loans and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I love that you ask more probing questions. And, and that's what I do. I just really, really get deep into it so that they can get a clear picture of where they are and where they want to be so that when they do get the home of their dreams, they can feel comfortable and confident that they've made a good, um, a good choice that they can really live with. Uh, yeah. because living, you got to live once you get the house. Um, you can't just purchase it and then it's just there, right? You you definitely have to have a lifestyle 
and pay that mortgage um, and all the other things that go along with home ownership. So um, how do you assist women in finding suitable mortgage uh, lenders or financial institutions that align with their needs and goals? I live on the south side of Indianapolis and I've lived here uh, really pretty much my entire life. My friends call it the circle of EJ. <laughs> <laughs> Not a whole lot of people around here that I don't know. And if, if people come to me a lot, um, you know, if anybody knows who somebody that does this, Elizabeth will know. And um, <laughs> tried to surround myself with people who, who I like and trust. So then I can, you know, for whatever the need is, um, you know, I have banking partners, I have other mortgage lender friends, you know, if it's, if it's something that I just can't do, and I know my friend can do it, you know, I'm going to make sure that they have all of those resources, you know, it, maybe they just need somebody to come cut their grass or trim a tree, or they need a plumber or electrician or, you know, somebody that's trustworthy, that's not going to take advantage of them. I always tell the story because it's kind of funny. My husband uh, used to sell cars for a living and he's the most straight shooter guy you will ever meet. And, um, you know, he, he wasn't the, the sleazy kind of car sales <laughs> about that. He knew what, you know, he knew the game and he wasn't going to play the game. And um, so, you know, he was really trustworthy. And so, you know, I've told all of my single women friends, I'm like, my husband will come with you. If you need a shop for a car, he will come with you so that you, you know, you don't feel like you're being taken advantage of. And, you know, I think that's real important just to, to have advocates and people that you can rely on to, to help you and that are trustworthy. So that I think that's a big fear for women is, you know, why well, don't yes know about this how do I know if I'm if I'm getting cheated or not you know and uh, I would hope that they would come to to trust me and that I would you know send them to a reliable partner that could help them with whatever it is that they need I love that you have those connections and that people feel comfortable coming to you I mean I myself feel comfortable coming to you and again that's why I chose you because I feel like you know you're really genuine and trustworthy and for women, we we need that. I said that in the beginning. We we need to feel like the person that we're sitting down with cares about us and you know wants to see the best for us. I feel like a lot of times, you know, people get into situations with mortgages that, you know, it's just less than favorable. As a matter of fact, I just spoke to someone recently who felt like she was given a bad deal and she has some buyer's remorse um, with the home that she bought. So thankfully she didn't, she wasn't associated with you. It wasn't your fault. <laughs> um, but yeah, so many horror stories I've heard about that. So um, before we wrap up, do you have any success stories or memorable experiences of women you've helped achieve their dream of home ownership? Oh my goodness. I, you know, I've, I've had so many uh, over the years, and every one of those feels like a victory to me. You know, th these women have overcome so many things and the sheer joy that they have to be able to provide a home for, for their children and, uh, you know, a stable environment for them um, is super rewarding. But uh, I will tell you that I've helped a couple of different clients. Um, one was with a home purchase and one was with a refinance. And in both situations, you know, there was not a husband involved in any of it. And one was a widow and, and one was just a single mom and, and her mom uh, were buying a home together. We were able to leverage some equity that they had in their existing homes to the mom and the daughter bought a home together. We were able to greatly improve the home uh, I mean, we basically tripled the square footage of the home. It was a much newer home for them. It met all their needs because they were just outgrown. They had outgrown the home that they had been in for, for quite some time. Um, but they also had a lot of debt. And mm. we were to to leverage uh, all the equity that they had built up in that home, paid off all of their debt. Mm. And wow. last debt, every car loan, every credit card, everything they had. So while um. they were making a bit higher house payment, we eliminated almost $4,000 in other monthly bills. So oh, wow. I, I, it's life changing uh, for them. You know, that, that puts them in just to know that, you know, they're not going to have to go get a part-time job. They're not going to have to do all these things because they've got all these 
bills that they've racked up and in charge and got themselves into a little bit of trouble. So we were able to do that. And then um, my other lady, she, she was a widow and they had accumulated some debt uh, with the home that they had purchased together while he was alive and renovating it. And been through his illness um, and, you know, she wasn't able to work as much. And so, you know, she was kind of, she was in a tough situation too. Uh, we were able to leverage equity in that home again, to pay off every bit of her debt. And, you know, the, the house payment, she wound up with a little bit higher house payment, but again, we were eliminating almost $2,000 in other monthly bills for her. You know, that meant that she, she didn't have that burden hanging over her anymore and wondering how she was going to make ends meet. And it just, the amount of stress that we were able to alleviate, it was just I can't even imagine how good that must have felt for them to be able to to now breathe a little bit easier when when they go get the mail from the mailbox, honestly. That's awesome. I, I love hearing stories like that because I, I know that they must feel like so at peace, so accomplished too, because home ownership and even a refi when you really are not sure if you could even pull it off is a big deal. So that is awesome. This has been a wonderful conversation. I just have one final question to ask you before I ask uh, where our viewers can find you is, uh, do you have any special resources or materials that you give to women to help them empower, to help empower them towards the um, home buying process? Uh, I don't necessarily have anything per se, um, but it's gonna depend on the situation. And, you know, I do have, like I mentioned, the Indiana housing program that I use. There's some other things too that, that I can direct them, you know, so, to some different websites, or you know, if we need to work on credit repair, there are gonna be some different things, you know, that I'm gonna provide to them, but it, it's gonna be really kind of specific for each individual client and, and what they're gonna need. But, um, you know, I have a lot of things that I that I can, you know, kind of connect them with, so. Thank you so much for, for this valuable conversation. Um, you shared so many um, wonderful things that, you know, we definitely need to hear because things are so generic. So hearing your take on it, it just makes, it brings it home more. So I, re I really enjoyed it. And I know that my, our viewers are really enjoying it. How can my viewers, how can our viewers reach you, you know, if they'd just like to talk about the, uh, about their situation or ask questions, or if they're in your state in our state, if um, they want to continue the process with you, you know, how can they find you? Right. So um, call, text, or email. I work from home a lot, which is a great flexibility that I have. Um, that way I, I can be available outside of your typical business hours. Um, that's just, I mean, really, let's be honest, that's when real estate happens. So, <laughs> so you can reach my cell, even if you call my office number, it's going to ring to my cell phone. Uh, and that number is 317 Three seven two four four zero four, and you can text me on that number as well, uh, or you can shoot me an email at Elizabeth Janes, and that's J A N like Nancy E S at C C M dot com. I'm licensed in the state of Indiana and in the state of Michigan, uh, but Tree Mortgage is a nationwide company, uh, and we do have a referral process. So if if someone is not residing in one of those states and is looking to purchase a home, uh, I can definitely connect them with other trusted loan advisors within Cross Country Mortgage, and I would still be involved through uh, the, the entire process for them, too. Oh, that's awesome. And I, I will put your information in the description box. So everyone out there watching, just know that her information is in the description box. Check her out and definitely contact her, even if you're not in the state of Indiana, and she'll be able to give you some great uh, direction there. Thank you again, Elizabeth, for being on with us. Really enjoyed this conversation. It was really great. And I, I hope you're able to come back again. Thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. I, I love it. Thank you so much. And there you have it, folks. Again, please go ahead and see her information in the description box. Thank you so much for watching until the end. I did promise you that I'd tell you more about myself and what I do. I help high achieving moms manage their money better so they can build wealth and leave a legacy for their children. So if you need to manage your money better, if there are some things that you need to work out with your finances, whether it be budgeting better, you need 
need some accountability, you need some systems in place, whatever it is, definitely see me. My information is in the description box. I do provide a free consultation. So definitely click on the link to set that up and let's see whether or not we'd be a good fit to work together. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you again for watching and remember, change your mind, change your pocketbook. See you in the next video.